Leeds United are set for a huge fixture against QPR on Friday night, and it is very likely a must-win game. We all know this. It's going to be incredibly tight at the top of the table. Every single point matters, and the Borough match was huge for momentum, but that's where we need to make it count. This could be decisive. So I'm going to dive into team news, predicted lineup, what QPR are likely to do and how we can counter it. But first, I would hugely appreciate if you could subscribe to the channel. I'm trying to push towards 3,000 subs by the end of the season, so I would massively appreciate if you could get on board. Thank you. Anyway, first up, we need to talk about Leeds United team news. And the first one isn't good. Dan James is definitely out for the rest of the season with, I think it's something like a tear in his rib muscles or something. I'll be honest, not a doctor. I don't know, and I don't want to make excessive speculation, but he's likely missing the rest of the season. In addition to that, Patrick Bamford is a major doubt. The way that Patrick, Patrick, Daniel Farker phrased it was he has a large bruise on and around his knee and may be able to play. However, it didn't look too positive, and Daniel Farker said that if the match was on Saturday or Sunday, he would very probably be picked, and this was part of his sort of complaints about the scheduling and the fact we've played Monday, Friday rather than Monday, Saturday, or Saturday, Friday, or something like that, which he's got a fair point, to be fair. Been a little bit shafted by the schedule. In addition to that, Rodon and Byram also have knocks coming out of the match against Middlesbrough, but they will very likely be fine. They've been training okay. It's just a sort of just-in-case. They could potentially have a problem, but 99% chance they'll be all good. So that means my predicted lineup is we're going to start with El Amelier because it just makes sense. He's our best goalkeeper. Had a couple of mistakes against Borough. This is where you ultimately rebuild. Backline, I've gone Byram, Rodon, Ampadu, Firpo. Why change a winning side, especially when on the left, Junior Firpo looks so good. In front of them, Gray and Gruev. Gray will be key to tactically beating QPR, but I will get into that in a little bit more detail later on. And Gruev, we know, is really good at breaking up play. In front of them, I've gone Somerville, Ruter, Nonto. Again, these created a lot of chances in the most recent match, and chance creation against QPR is going to be absolutely essential. And finally, up top, I'm going to say Patrick Bamford in the event that he is fit. I think that one day won't make too much of a difference. If he isn't deemed fit, then I would probably go with Joel Piru. I've explained in my uh, most recent video where I discussed the Bamford injury that I don't think Matteo Joseph is in the perfect position to start right now. It'd be like teaching someone to take penalty kicks and making a choice between having them take penalty kicks in front of a small stadium of fans at the start of the season that are quite happy with it, or you take one penalty and it's at Wembley in front of 90,000 people with millions watching at home. That would be a bad idea. So I'm going to go with Bamford if he's not fit, Piru. So now we need to talk about what we can expect from QPR because a football match has two sides in it. And ultimately we're supporting one of them, but to win you need to understand the other. And QPR are a relatively passive side. They average 46.5% possession in the championship this season. And when you look at their games against top four sides, like we are, that number goes down drastically. At the lowest, they've had 22% possession. And they've had that twice. I think they've had 25% possession twice against top four sides. And the highest they've had is 39%. In those matches, they've managed just four points, beating Leicester and having a draw against Ipswich, which it's not awful results for them, but it's something like a little more than half a point a game. So it's definitely a team to go at, and they're not really good at keeping the top sides out. Tactically, they like to sit deep as you can tell by the way that they don't have any of the ball ever, and then go hard. They will hit you on the counter. They have a lot of transitional football about them. In addition to that, a fair bit of dribbling. They've had a lot of solo goals, 17 goals without any assists, which tells you that a lot of the time someone will come out dribbling, try and beat a few players and have a dig. If it works for them, it works for them. Let's hope it doesn't this time. And in addition to that, in Leeds United versus QPR matches, the last seven times the two teams have faced each other, the home side has won. This isn't an advantage with the way that QPR play, by the way. This is just something we need to be aware of. It's a nice streak that I would quite like us to beat, but we will get into whether or not we think that that will happen at the end of the video. We do need to talk about QPR's weaknesses as well, though, and they have a fair few. They tend to be a very aggressive side. But 95 yellow cards this season so far, in addition to four reds, and that's in comparison to our 67 yellows, two reds. They're a fairly kicky side in comparison to us. Compared to the rest of the league, they're a little bit worse than average. But compared to us, 
we'll see a lot of fouls, we'll see a lot of fairly crunchy ones, and that is a weakness because it means that we can target players. Players that are likely to be clumsy, go for them, draw out a nice hard challenge, they're on a yellow card and you can keep going at them. And either he'll get sent off because he's not changed what he's doing or he's changed what he's doing and now he's not confident. In addition to that, they concede far more goals than they should. They've conceded 57 and their XG says they should have conceded 48.1. Had a little bit of a deeper dive into what the problem is here, whether it's just the qualities of shot are a little bit better than expected or if it's a goalkeeping problem and it is definitely a goalkeeping problem. Post shot XG that measures how hard it should be to save a chance. Um, says that basically they've conceded roughly nine more goals than the shot quality that their goalkeeper has faced. So that is definitely something that we can look to target throughout this match. In addition to that, they are the third lowest scorers in the league, scoring just 41. That's less than a goal per game. And they only have one clear conduit for their chances, and that is Elias Chair. Shut him down, and we shut the team down. There's an argument that you shouldn't even be playing at the moment, but that is an issue for a completely different video. So, what do Leeds United need to do? There's quite a bit of stuff that we can look to do to take advantage of to really sort of cause QPR some problems. First up, I think we need to try and coax them out of that low block. Something that we tried against Middlesbrough that worked really well, created a good few chances, including Somerville's goal, was hand over possession from time to time. Let them have the ball, let them play up the pitch, and then ultimately they will leave space in behind because they won't be used to having possession. Their sort of defence, when it's in that rested state, will not be as structured as ours is. So I won't mind us handing the ball over to them, letting them have a couple of opportunities to maybe pass it around our box, because the moment we win that ball back, we have Ruter, we have Somerville, we have Nonto, we might have Bamford, we might have Joseph, we might have Piru, and that transitional attack from us is going to be deadly. In addition to that, Archie Gray's runs from the midfield are going to be absolutely key. What we saw in the most recent match was he would bomb down the left-hand side fairly often to draw a defender away from Crescencio Somerville, leaving him one-on-one. -on -one. If we keep doing that, then Somerville is going to beat his man more times than he fails to, which is a really good position for us to be in, especially when Somerville, after he beats a single man, sometimes decides, I think I can see a corner of the goal over there, and he just bends it in perfectly. Fantastic. Keep doing that. That Archie Gray run is really effective. It's something you don't necessarily get out of Kamara as well. So it's a little bit of variance we've got there. And on the topic of variance, I think we need to focus on varied attack. The issue that we have against these low blocks is we will always look to create the sort of perfect chance. And it will be passed around and we'll look for a ball into someone in the box and we'll hope for a tap-in. But what we need to do a little bit more often, I think, is... Take that longer shot from time to time to keep the goalkeeper on his toes because we know that goalkeeper isn't fantastic. We need to work him where possible. But in addition to that, it's not just work the goalkeeper. It's maybe use the wide areas as often as possible. Get to the byline and cut it back. And then you can do the passing it around and trying to force it to someone that's already in the box because they won't necessarily know what to expect. If we keep attacking the same way, they'll keep defending the same way and it'll keep working. So change it up a bit and I think we'll be completely fine. In addition to that, I think we will really need to protect our players a little bit. If we're going into the 50th, 60th minute and we're 3-0 up, it might feel risky, but take off Somerville, take off Ruter. If he's on the pitch, take off Pat Bamford, take off Rodon or Byram, take off anyone that looks like they might have a knock at that moment because three points here is good. And if we've secured three points by that point, then we make the changes. But the bigger three points, arguably, is the Southampton match. Once we know what that QPR game is going to look like, once we know if we've got three points or if we need to keep fighting, we can make a decision. But if we can make the decision where we rest players, make it. Because that Southampton match is going to be absolutely essential. But we're not at Southampton yet, we're at QPR. So my predictions for that QPR match is it's going to be a very grindy, very difficult game if QPR are able to turn it into the match they want to. But at the same time, on their end, the pressure is mostly off. They're not mathematically safe yet but they just need one or two teams at the bottom to drop some points. They'll be completely fine. So they could come out the shell a little bit more, show that home crowd ultimately what the team can do, and that is absolutely where we're going to get our opportunities, hitting them when they're trying to hit us. I think there'll be plenty of fouls flying in, but at the end of the day, I think Leeds United will break that streak I was talking about earlier. That streak dies at seven. I'm going with a 2-0 win for Leeds United. 
But ultimately, I want to know what you think. Let me know in the comments down below your predictions for the score, what you think will happen with the lineup, absolutely anything that comes to mind. Uh, like the video if you enjoyed it, and that's always massively appreciated, as well as subscribing. Let's try and get to that 3,000 by the end of the season. Could also become a channel member. All that channel membership revenue at the moment is going to Prostate Cancer UK, so that'd be hugely appreciated. Hope you enjoyed the video. I will see you later. Oh, I've got the dentist in the morning. That's a nightmare. Might do a stream. If I stream with a funny voice tomorrow, that's why. <laughs> see you later.